Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin this study with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful uh, for the time that we have uh, this morning and each morning to open your word together. And we invite your spirit's presence that you can teach us, that we can understand the things that you are revealing to us. Um, we know, Lord, that there's much that we still do not understand. And so we just ask that um, as we open your word, that your Holy Spirit can speak to us, that um, can help us with our particular needs to see our sins, to confess them and forsake them, to be renewed spiritually, to understand the mind of Christ, which is beyond human understanding, and to reveal Christ's character to all around us. Be with us in this study as we continue to prepare messages um, that will be presented this summer. And we know, Lord, that there's many things that you want to say to us. We just ask that we can be open to hear your voice. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, we have been putting this song of Deborah and Barack on a line. And the reason that we are doing so is that we could, we never did so before. So we never put them on a line in the past. We just said this reiterates um, the, what's in chapter four. But if it's reiterating what's in chapter four, it must be a repeat of history. And so, it, it, and it's a repeat of a history within our movement. So there's something that happened in our movement that is repeated. So that's what we need to understand what this song of Deborah and Brack is, how it's repeated, and, and where we would apply it. So there's... It's going to take us a while to get through some of this because there's a bunch of things that I've been looking at and that I've noticed uh, that are related to this and, um, and all the, the controversies that are existing in this movement. Now, one of the things that I believe is that all of the things that are happening in this movement are in God's providence, even the things that we're not happy about. That is, God is trying to teach us something and he's bringing us through an experience and we need to trust him. We need to trust that even though things look not so good, that, that he has foreseen these things. And we have witness of that because of what he has shown us as we've moved through this history in our movement. And so we believe that the book of Judges is given to us to understand in this particular way that it's referring to a period from 9-11 to 2023, which is this year, and that God is showing us things about this year, what it means. Now, um, so we're going to look at some things, and, and some of these things I started to look at I haven't completed, and they may work out to mean something, they may not, but there's still things we learn from doing so. And we, we when we, when we, Examine. So what you're seeing is, is how we look at a line, how we analyze the symbols and how we decide what they mean. So you're going to see the process. That's what we've been doing in these studies is we're showing the process of how we study God's word and how God reveals light to us. You know, we're not coming with the answers uh, and preaching to you. Right. So that's never been happening in these studies. We just look for God's leading as we study his word. And I think that's that's part of Miller's rules, if not, you know, the basis of Miller's rules is that we go to God's word for light, not to um, not to uh, confirm our biases, not to confirm what we believe. Right. Not to find out what. You know, what we think we believe and just pick and choose things that fit our understanding. We go to God's word to be corrected. 
And that, that's not just intellectual correction. It's spiritual correction. So, so that's the process that we've been going through. And so when we look at this song of Deborah and Brack, we didn't look at it before in the way that we're looking at it now, but I don't think we could have understood it be before. Um, before now. So God has given us light when we needed it. And, and I believe that this is uh, this light. So um, today's Tuesday, and I'm going to be here tomorrow. I'm not going to be here Thursday, though. Um, you guys are still going to have a study. So Dwight will probably be leading out, I think, in that study. Um, now, I say I won't be here. I mean, we still will record it here. I'm going to still record it here. And I'm, I'm not sure Heidi still might be here. Uh, we haven't decided yet, but uh, it'll... Yeah, so Heidi's going to be here, so she's going to end up recording it. I'm going to have to leave like shortly after it starts, so I, I can be here for the first few minutes. But I have an appointment in Edmonton at eight thirty. So anyway, um, we're we're and what's going to happen on Thursday? What God is revealing to us, we still don't know, right? We we still don't know why we're going through these experiences, but we can trust that this is purposeful. So. <clears throat> In the Song of Deborah and Barak, we've already looked at some of the symbols. Now, the first thing that we would look at is that the first part is going to be giving us information about the period of darkness. Right. So then saying Deborah and Barak, the son of Obinoam, on that day, saying. Um, Praise ye the Lord for, aven for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the God, the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped and the clouds also dropped rain. So what is this when he wentest out of Seir and marchest out of the field of Edom? What is this referring to? What's what's the the reference? Because it's referring to the past, right? So what what is being referred to? So Deuteronomy thirty three two, right? And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousand thousands of saints from his right hand, went to fiery law for them. Right. So this is referring to. Um, to what? So we got Sounds like the second coming. Yeah, it's it's a symbol of the second coming, but also the symbol of the giving of the law. Now we know Sinai is where the law is given, but it's mentioned Seir, and Seir is just um, a, a place in uh, well, it says Idumea. Where is Idumea? Well, that would be south of Israel. That's south of Israel, right? Yep. Maybe slightly east as well. What's that? Sort of maybe a bit east as well. South east. I think originally at that their time, it was more, more like south east, but then um, the, the uh, Edomites went more directly south around the time of Herod. Okay. During that time. Right. And yeah, so it's the Edomi is where the Edomites are from. Right? Yes. So yeah. Right, okay. And then uh, he shined forth from Mount Paran. So that's the de desert of Arabia, according to the dictionary here. Right? So, so this is Mount Seir, 
um, Idumea, so Edom, where the Edomites are, and from Paran, which is Arabia. So we got these three. I'm not sure why these three are mentioned here, but this is um, Moses uh, blessed the children of Israel before his death. So this is what he's going to say. Um, and, and we can see that this becomes a type of the second coming. So there's a lot more to this to this uh, chapter, but we're not going to read all that. We just wanted to reference that verse. Uh, so to understand what's being talked about. Now we have this mentioned, um, uh, or not mentioned, but at least referenced here in Psalm 68, verse 7 to 8. O oh God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, the earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God, and even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. So this is the giving of the law uh, referenced as well. And in Habakkuk, uh, 3 verse 3 to 6 God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise and his brightness was as the light he had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet he stood and measured the earth he beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered the perpetual hills did bow and his ways are everlasting so <clears throat> when we look at these these passages these verses um i mean this is a poetic language but we can see seer and edom are mentioned here paran is not right but sinai is going to be mentioned right the mountains melted before the lord even that sinai from before the lord god of israel so this is referring back to what God had done in the past in the giving of the law, right? But then you're going to see in verse 6, in the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, um, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways, right? So, so the protection that God had is not there. People have to go through byways. If you went on the highways, you would get robbed, right? Um, the inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. So here we have what this darkness is. And we have the, the message that comes at the time of the end, right? So Deborah represents this message. This message is related to Bumblebee Road, right? This is the movement, right? And, and um, we know it's going to talk about the gates. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? So we said that the gates represent the institutions, right? So that's where the battle's going to be. Uh, there's three basic things that are being battled for. Lambert Church, FFA, and the School of the Prophets. So we know that um, Parminder's movement's going to get none of those, right? They're going to seek to get FFA, Um but that's going to be withdrawn, even though that offer was there. They don't end up with FFA. They don't end up with any of the resources of FFA. They don't end up with the School of the Prophets. And they don't end up with Lambert Church, even though they tried to take that over. Right? Um, so, so that's that battle. So that brings us to uh, that history connected to 11.9. Right? But it, it could go back further. I mean, it could go back, you know, you could say, well, you could put it back at September 7th or you could put it back August 29th. But what this is talking is about the period of darkness uh, that's going on when Deborah arises. Now, um, so, so we have a time of the end. Something's marked there as the time of the end. And so. That's 
So that's you emphasize those three things. You said uh, those three things were being after, and you're referencing those three things were the three things that were inside the statement um, um, in the song, right? Okay, so um, I don't know if necessarily they, they relate directly, but I'm just saying there's three things there, Seer, Edom, and Sinai. So it was noticeable anyway. Right. And here we have three things that where this battle is going to be waged, right? Yeah, that's another coincidence. Yeah, well, it's not a coincidence, but <laughs> I know that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, and and but we have this reference to Shamgar, right, and to JL. So, obviously, we know that this whole battle that we're relating Shamgar because that was in. Uh, the first group of judges, right? And and Shamgar right. to this history. So when we we looked at we drew out these lines, we could see that there's a parallel between Shamgar and what happens uh, with JL, right? So these are symbols that are tied together. And, and um, you know, Shamgar specifically related to uh, the presentations that I did that that had to do with the development of chronology uh leading to the affirmation of this this structure right that we have and then um jl is going to be um uh, well how did we do jl here because jl and the spike that's going to be November 9th, 2019, right? So and we had some discussion about, about that, whether that should be moved um, because of some things Stephen said last time. So we're going to look at that again, uh, go back to that. Um, but here we have JL and Sham Shamgar tied together. So it ties these two symbols together. And... And this is the period of darkness. So that means whatever this song of Deborah and Barak is talking about, it's a message that arrives when there's a period of darkness. And that period of darkness is occurring in the time of Shamgar and Jael. So we need to identify what this darkness is so that we can under, understand when the time of the end is, when this first message arrives. So when Deborah arises. Now, she's going to be a mother in Israel, right? Um, and we're saying that this has to do with instruction, that a mother is, the, is to be the first teacher. So this is the aspect that's being uh, addressed. So this would have to do with uh, an education that we receive. Um but, but it shows that, that this happens at the time that we have this battle um, with these new gods that come, right? They chose no new gods, and there was war in the gates, right? This, and um, it says there was, there, was a, there was a shield or spear. Was there a shield or spear seen among the 40,000 in Israel? Well, this is a rhetorical question that there wasn't a shield or a spear seen, right? Is that the idea there? Correct. There was not. Right. That's what we that's what we determined anyway. Right. So there's no shield or spear. So the shield, um, now we know that we could, you know, put on the full armor of God. We know that there's this shield of faith. Uh, there doesn't, they don't mention a spear per se in, in, um, uh, that's what Ephesians chapter six, um, where it talks about put on the full armor of God. No, it talks about the sword that proceedeth out of the mouth, but not, I mean, the, the sword, but it doesn't talk about a spear. Yeah. yeah. So this word here is Romach, uh, from an unused root meaning to hurl. Um, and the shield is. Um, it means a protector, figuratively a protector. Uh, that is the small one or buckler, also the scaly hide of the crocodile. So this is so the main thing is one is a defensive weapon and one is 
is a offensive weapon, offensive, <clears throat> right? Right. Okay. So that means that that somehow uh, this movement was um, not prepared for whatever this battle was, right? So whatever this shield of spear, if we, uh, the shield, of course, could represent faith, um, but the spear would represent uh, the understanding of, of God's word in some way, because God's word, even though it's a sword, I mean, we could, we could address it here as a spear. And, and this would specifically, I think, relate to line upon line. So, so God's people don't have a shield or a spear. A spear is a line. Yes, yes, I know. And it's a line that goes in a direction, right? So it's got a point. Correct. Okay. So now we, we took this symbol of, of 40,000, and we just simply divided 40,000 by 360, right? And we get this symbol of 11. So it's 100. 11.1 repetent, right? So it just goes on, it's all just ones. And, and we could have done it the other way. We could have started with 40,000 and um, divided it by 111, and you would get 360 decimal, 360 going on, right? Repetent. So that was the symbol for time. Right. So, so we can see that, that, this this relates to this movement, this 40,000 in Israel. And we have this symbol of the 11th day of the first month. Now, it is also a symbol of the 777 structure because there's seven, uh, 111 weeks in the 777 structure. Right. So that's why when Jeff saw the end of that Levitical chiasm as January 11th, we could see that 11... Uh, you know, 111, representing the whole structure of the 777 structure, right? So, so I think that's, you know, pretty remarkable, right, that we have this symbol that's here at this time. And, and then at that time, this is the beginning of the 777 structure, right? That's going to be November uh, 9th. Uh, 2019 so that's going to start a period of 777 days or 1100 weeks but it has this additional um so if we had 1100 weeks that's 777 days but if i if i add um this 0.1111 um, what what would that mean, right? I mean, it's it's we have this echo of that. So how could we apply that as a period of time? Can we apply it as a period of time? That is an extension of the seven hundred and seventy seven days. So here's an interesting, so if we take it as a, as that is 0 0.11111 of a week, it's going to be 0 0.7777 of a day, right? Here, I'll, I'll show you the math. Yeah, I here. think that's what we, we did earlier. Well, no, we didn't do this earlier. We didn't do no. that. No. So, so again, what we do is we take this 40,000. We divide it by 360, the symbol for prophetic time. We get this number. So we can see these are our weeks, right? So if we multiply it, we're going to get this number, right? So it's 777 days plus part of seven of a day right that is a point seven 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 part of a day right so you subtract seven 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 
and you devote you you say well this is a part of day how many hours is it right so you just multiply it by 24 right and that will give you how many hours so it's going to be 18.66666 hours so what is 18.66666 is that not the symbol for july 18th um If we rounded, if we rounded it up, it would be one eight point seven, right? Eighteen point seven. Yes, it would be if we rounded okay. up. Yeah, to so that would be the one eight seven. There you go, right? So, so it's giving us this symbol of one eight seven as well. So it's tying us to the seven 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 structure, and to the important date within that seven seven structure. That is the answer to Parminder, right? And tests what they're teaching, which is July 18th. That's going to be the test, so to speak. Because those that accept July 18th are going to reject Parminder and Tess's message, right? Yes. So, so all that's built into that 40,000. Who don't have a sword or a spear or a shield or a spear, right? So that means that there is something that we are unequipped with when Parminders comes, but we're provided with when Deborah arises. So we need to figure out when yeah, Deborah arises. I get okay. that now. Yeah. Okay, good. So so I think it's it's very very powerful symbol that that we have with that forty thousand. Okay. Now who knows? We could probably find more symbols in that, but for now, to me, these are sufficient to help us understand why we would place this on the line where we do. Right. This is not. We're we're, we're looking at these symbols and we're not being arbitrary. This is what determines their position. It's right. not us that determines it. It's 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 the scriptures that basically are determining it through the symbology that we're we're getting. Yeah. And and see, we've already built up this whole structure, starting with an assumption, and then we found that it all fit into place, right? So but now we're taking the song of Deborah and Barak, and we're saying that this is a zoom into on this line above, the Song of Deborah, Judges 5, is the repeat of history of this previous line. Now, this line went from September 23rd, 2017 to November 9th, 2019. It was a period of 777 days. But we have in our history, so that's a history that, that was answering to Parminder's message. It was a message related to understanding time using Parminder's time setting, but in the end, testifying against Parminder and Tess that what they were teaching was evil, right? And, and primarily, it's the Levitical chiasm that's in there, but it relates to this July 18 symbol that is found. So, you know, which I should probably put in here, um, uh, July 18. So I'll do this as a symbol, right? And just write maybe snow, right? So this comes from Snow's letters. So obviously we, we can see that that's all going to be part of this, um, this invitation that, that happens. So, so that's the truth that's going to be um, given and now, when we, we looked at this, this line, and we put the Song of Deborah was 1120, this all completed this structure that we had earlier, because the temptation would be, oh, we're just going to put July 18th there. But July 18th is part of the next line, Gideon, right? Gideon's going to be July 18th. And so this is just addressing this repeat of history. So you have this first 777 days. 
And we would have to say that this song of Deborah is going to relate to this uh, to this line, but it's going to be a repeat of that line, right? So now we put January 11th, 2023 at the end of this, whether that's the right place or not, probably isn't, uh, but it might be, you know, I don't know. But here we have the other January 11th that was given us, um, and that might end up being the fourth angel arrives rather than the third angel arrives. I don't know. But I think what we have to do here, based on what we see with Deborah arising, um, we have some options. We could put September 7th there, right? But we know that there's this period of probation that's being given to the movement as a whole from when Jeff arises on, on September 7th uh, to November 9th. So what do we put here? Do we have any symbols for September 7th? Because Deborah arising could be when Jeff arises. Now he's going to rise on September 7th, but where is he going to speak? On September 7th, 2019. Um, School of the Prophets? No. I, I don't know. I don't have the notation for that. It's the last sermon done at Lambert Church, right? The place that they're going to have this battle over, right? So we know that there's this battle going. And so I'm arguing that we wouldn't... Um, Okay, so Iran puts 9,700 that leave Gideon. It's a question there. Okay. Um, probably referring to what, what's happening there when you get the 10,000 separated uh, into 9,700 and 300. Um, you're trying to say that that's going to be September 7th, Iran? Or you? what are you trying to address here? Uh, just thinking if that's a symbol for 97 or not. Oh, okay. The symbol for 97. Yeah. Now, so I wouldn't put September 7th here as the first angel arriving. And the reason that I wouldn't, but you may have a different to different view, is that I look at that as the battle going on at the gates, right? So during this time from, set, you know, you're going to have... August 29th, you're going to have this rebellion, right? The rebellion of Baal Peor. And then you're going to have Jeff arise. You know, he's going to wake out of his sleep and we could say, well, Deborah arises. But this is actually the part of the battle that's going on, right? The battle at the gates with the new gods. So I claim that that's still occurring in the period of darkness. But, but maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe we could put September 7th there. I would put November 9th, but, you know... Um, any thoughts on whether we should put What's September? her reasoning? Well, my reasoning is that the September 7th to November 9th is a period of probation that was given uh, to the movement. So you're thinking that um, when, when the probation was over would be the uh, ar arrival of the first angels? Um. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, when that probation is over, now, now the date that 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 we that put actually there, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it it ends up being the close of probation here because this this is just a repeat of history, right? So remember the song of Deborah and Brax, a repeat of history, and so it's going to begin with this close of probation but it's going to be addressing now something within our movement that is, is an answer to a period of darkness. And, and it's not going to be, I mean, one of the things we saw with November 9th is that we get the 273 there, right? Because that's when we're going to have that um, Levitical chiasm, not, not the, the 273, the March 27th firmly established based upon the mind calibre, which is going to be part of the Levitical chiasm. And Jeff's going to mark uh, January 11th, 2020, 
as the end of that. Um, so, I mean, my, um, you know, my, my, dis my choice is to put 9-11 there and then the formalization of that message as being January 11th, 2020, right? That's where I'm thinking. But, you know, it could be different, right? So, so we have to figure, figure out how we would address that. And, and the formalization, see, so this is just my bias of my mind of how I think. So I'm looking at this structure. I see we have this period of darkness. And, and we have to figure out what is the particular light? What is the increase of knowledge that, that's coming and what's going to be addressed in these symbols? You know, an arrival of a message, a formalization, an empowerment. And then how would that lead to the second message, whatever it's going to be, that you need to understand the first message in order to receive the second message? And we and if this January 11th end date, whether it's going to be on the fourth angel arriving or on the third angel arriving, wherever that's going to be, we know that January 11th, 2023 symbol is there in this line. And I would say it's it either has to be the third angel arriving or the fourth angel arriving. And that because that's what's being set up by call and study is this close of probation symbol, right? That is, it's the end of this prophetic mirror that, that he right. is. Okay. And, and we know that with this, we have uh, connections 2,640 days to, you know, April 5th, 2030, which is what I, which was what I'm assuming that the fourth angel arriving is. But we may come to a different conclusion as we go through these lines. So this is just tentative. But those are my reasons. Can somebody make a case for September 7th being the arrival of the first angel? So one is we have Deborah arose, right? So we could say, well, Jeff woke from his sleep. So the increase of knowledge could be that period of time where this battle for the gates is going on. Would that be consistent or would we have to have that? as part of the period of darkness. I don't know. It seems to me like that was, we were still in that darkness um, up yeah. until at least that point. Right. And maybe even a little bit beyond it. Right. So for me personally, I would say that this is still a period of darkness. Well, the darkness always continues, but I don't think September 7th is, even though we do get a message that arrives there, right? But it's still relating more to the first part of, of Deborah and Barak, not the song of Deborah and Barak. So to me, this is, we have Deborah and Barak, that history, and September 7th is in that history. And, but the song of Deborah and Barak is, is repeating that history, but it's repeating that history in reference to a particular darkness that now we're going to receive a light on that's going to lead to this January 11th symbol. And it's also related to the 777 days. I agree with that because of the, um, the statement in the beginning of the song of Deborah, when it talks about uh, Jir and um, uh the other fella, uh, God, what's his Talking name? About Shamgar and Jail. Shamgar, Shamgar yeah. and Jail. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do this here. So, so again, you know, I put these things in here, um, but you know, they're not set in stone. Now, yeah, well, that's why you're using Publisher. It's easy to move them around. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. So we know. Um, now, we have that 777 days there. So, I mean, we, we would say, well, that would end on December 25th, 2021. And we, and we could just do that. Um, but we, we could do something else. Um, now, how many days is it from December 20th? So I'm going to do this.
So how many days is it from December 25th, 2021 to January 11th, 2023? December 11th, you said? December 25th, 2021 to January 11th, 2023. So remember, we had this period of time. 382 days. From December 25th, 2021, yeah, to January 11th, 2023, is how many? It says 382 days. Okay, so 382 days. Now, what can we do with this 382 days? What, what is, that's, what, a, that's a cardinal, not an inclusive. Yeah. Yeah, so it actually is 383 because you have to count January 11th because it's the end of January 11th. Okay, so that's a 383 then. Okay, so that's an embolismic year, right? That's that's actually called a deficient embolismic year, right? A regular embol embolismic year is 384 days. Tired and, with time again, huh? And, and a complete embolismic year is 385. Right. And then you have a common year. You can have a deficient common year that's 353. Uh, a regular common year is 354. And a complete common year is 355 days. Right. So that's that's how you would use in the solar lunar calendar, the, the biblical calendar, because they have embolismic years. They don't in the Islamic calendar, they don't add an extra month. But anyway, so we have a year with an extra month added. Now, remember, uh, now December 25th, 2021, um, it's going to be uh, used in relation to, we're going to understand it, this period of, of December 25th, 2021 as the 20th day of the ninth month, right? And it's going to go to the first day of the 10th month. And and uh, and then it's going to be this period of the divorcement that ends on the first day of the first month, and and that year of Ezra has a year of three hundred and fifty four days, so this is twenty nine days more, right? So this is just uh, and that three hundred and fifty four would be uh, a common uh, uh, regular year, right? Not deficient or complete. So we're just adding a 29 day month to a 354 day year. So that's that's why we have this number. I hope that makes sense to people. Now, um, so so if we're going to um, So if we look at this, this is going to be one year later. Now, uh, so I just got to check here. I know I'm just trying to think this through. So when we deal with uh, January 11th, 2023, the biblical date there is uh, uh, the 18th day of the 10th month. So um, I don't know if that means anything but it's, we're going to have this 18, right? And now the difference between a, um, well, here, here we'll, we'll try to, I, I'm trying to explain this without getting too confusing. Now, if we went from December 25th, 2021 to January 11th, 2023, that is, we would have the difference between a, a year of 383 days and a year of 365 days. That is, 18 is the difference. Does that make sense to people what I'm talking about? 
So the difference between December 25th and January 11th in a concurrent years, right? So if you were doing 21 to 23 and you counted January 11th as a whole day, that would be 18 days, right? Uh, a year and 18 days, right? Yeah, it's a year and 18 days. That's all I'm saying. A year and 18 days is 383. And then ballistic. <laughs> yep, there it okay. is. Yeah, so so you, you're at least following me. Okay, so I'm going to, because I've sort of half, half thought this out. So instead of 70, 777 days, here we got we got 365 plus 18. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to say there. So instead of writing it, well, we can say it's 383 as well. It that way. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. To me. Now that means, of course, this whole period, seven, seven, seven days, it's obviously not that period of time. Right, that it's 777 days plus 383 days. So it's 11, 1160 days. Right, now if we took 1160, we turned it upside down and backwards, what would we get? Six one one, yeah, six one one, and upside down it'd be nine one one. Okay, yeah, so you get nine eleven, right? So I, I don't know how to flip it around, but that's but you, how we did that, was, or that's how um, Stephen did it recently. Right. Yeah, so we've done this before, right? So we can see, um, you know, if we just put a mirror above it, we would have eleven nine, right? And if we and then if we put a, another mirror beside it, you would get nine eleven. So, okay. I know there's a little bit of math here this morning. Um, it's going to be a little bit more too. But but we can see that this seven 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 relating to this extension of this extra year plus eighteen days. Um, and we saw that when we took 777 multiplied by, um, or, uh, or pardon me, divided by 360, we got this symbol of 1111, uh, you know, 111.111. And then we could also look at that represents the number of weeks. And so we could say that the number of weeks here in 777 days is... Um, Uh, 770, like multiplied by this 111 here, the, the, the 40,000, it's going to be this number of 777 days, or, or pardon me, yeah, days, because it's 111 weeks, point, and then a point seven of a day, which is 18.7 uh, hours, right? Now, we can see 18, of course, is not 18.7 there, but uh, we could probably figure out some Round it off, it is. Yeah, round it off, we'll round it down, right? But we could probably even attach some very specific time from uh, um, these number of days and hours to actually fit into the 187, but I'm not going to do that right now. So, but anyway, 
we're going to go back here. So you can look at the diagram, right? So we have that symbol of, of, of 11,600. And so we're going to put that here, right? Oh, it was actually 1160. Right, so that's the number of days that we have here. And, and we just simply do this. And you can say that it's, it, it is, I don't know what symbol I could use here. I use this. Is, um, So first I would turn it, no, I'm gonna do it this way. So if I turn it on its head, flip it over, it's going to be 11.9, right? And then if I reverse it, well, we'll just leave it there, just go like that. We'll just do it upside down, that's easier, okay? So 11.9, so we just wish I could make a symbol the opposite of that. There probably is one, I just don't know how to make it. Okay, make sense? Yes. Okay, so, so the 11.9 is really what we need because that's where we're starting, November 9th. But we also know it relates to 9.11, uh, right? Because they're the same symbol. Okay, so we have this, this symbol here. Now, um, then uh, what was the other thing? So we're going to have, I'll get rid of one of these. So we still have the 777 days in here. It's just, um, over here. Okay, that makes sense. Oops, you need another seven. You need another seven there, bro. And we're gonna say, of course, that this is Okay, so we got 700 days, 111 weeks. Now, um, now the symbol of 1190. Um, so there's there's lots of relationships here that we need to sort of address. Now at 911, we're going to have um, or at 119 here. Uh, we're going to have the mind calendar addressed and its relationship to um, the prediction of July 18. And, and one of the main symbols here is this symbol. So we didn't address this symbol when we talked about it in the other lines. We were addressing the 273. But I think that this is the particular symbol that must be understood as a message that arrived on November 9th, 2019. That is, we're specifically going to understand that this, that this Mayan calendar gives me a symbol, and maybe what I'll even do here is just get rid of the zero. So I'm just going to do this. And, whoops. Now, when we look at 144,000 uh, days, that in the Mayan calendar is a, a batuk, right? 
if I seem to recall, yes. So that, that is a period of 144,000 days. And, um, and I had related that when you take the number of days in 391 years, it's 142,810, right? So I'll let you guys see the calculation. It's a lot easier. So we have 144,000 days. Whoops. Get that extra four there. Minus 142,810 days. Now, this number here, 142,810, is... 11,900 uh, days and uh, 22 hours, we'll just say, right? Round it off. So it's, um, and that is uh, 391 uh, solar years, and it's also 403 Islamic years, right? So that relates to that number, 11,900 days, which is 33 years and seven months on the Islamic calendar, and 32 years and seven months on the Gregorian calendar, right? And we know, you know, Stephen was born 11,900 days before 9-11, right? So we have that, that symbol. But if you subtract these, you get 11, 1,190, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, so we can see that this, this symbol is, is presented at the School of the Prophets on November 9th, along with the 273. But the 273 comes as a result of using the Islamic calendar, which has this difference, um, one back, back to between that period of 391 years. So, so it's, it's 1190 days difference, which is pretty remarkable. Now, when we looked at that period of 11,900 days, it actually ends up being more specifically 11,900 days. Um, let me see, how's that go? and 1190 minutes. So, and, and I'll show you this calculation. <clears throat> if you have trouble with the math, you can watch the video over again and, and do the math yourself. I, I usually suggest people do that. They do these calculations. So what we have just simply is you have uh, 29.5305 nine four that is the length of the month that the islamic calendar uses so it's a little bit different from the 29.530587 that we presently use because this number is based it's it's only like a few seconds difference but uh this is the the one that's based that the islamic calendar uses as the length of the month right so in their calculations um, now, so you multiply this by 12 and you get how long an Islamic year is on average, right? And there's going to be 403 Islamic years, right, in, in that period of time. So when we have 390 solar years, it's going to be this many uh, Islamic years. So, so I can multiply this then by 403. And I get... 142,809.952584 days. So that's the number of, of days uh, that is in that 391 years. Now, if you divide it by 12, again, just to show you that that is the period of time that it takes for the Islamic calendar to line up again with our calendar. It's 11,900 days, and that number at the end, so if I subtract that, 11,900, see if I do this right. 
I know I always do it wrong. So this is the number of, of hours that are left over, right? And so um, I, can, I can find out how many hours that is, like in hours, by just multiplying it by 24, and I get 19 hours and another decimal, right? Now, if I multiply this by 60, it'll give me the number of minutes, which is 1194. So actually, I think I did that wrong. I think I was supposed to use this 29.53 because that's the actual number. I know I, I did it backwards. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to take this number. So this is the actual length of the month. Um, that's why I was using the wrong one. Okay, times. So we're going to multiply this by um, 403, right? So that's going to give us this many days. That's the right number now. And then I subtract this number because I want to subtract out the days. That's how much left of a day there is. And then I just multiply this by 24 and then by 60. And then I get, there it is, 11, 1190 minutes. So if we take the actual length of a month, use that, not, not the one that uh, they used in ancient times, but the actual length of a month. And we, we look at how long a period of between the Islamic calendar and the solar year, it's 11,900 days plus 1,190 minutes, right? So you can see this 11.9 keeps showing up. And this is, I presented this on November 9th, 2019, in my study on the 273. Right, this is part of the study. Okay, so does that help us see the significance of this 11.9 being November 9th as the starting point of this? Uh, yeah, it's... Now that you've gone over all this explanation, yeah, it's much clearer to me how okay. you came up with that. Okay, good. So um, now we're, we're going to still address a bit more math. I'm sorry about that, but there's, there's some more math here in, in this. So another thing we're going to look at. So I, I mentioned this before the study, so some people saw this. But I was looking at a symbol and that is with 777 now we've used days right but what if we used months so keep in mind that this islamic calendar this number 11900 is you know with this extra uh, 1190 minutes is is this period of time between the islamic calendar and the solar calendar that's the difference between, uh, like, every year, uh, the Islamic calendar is going to change. It's going to be 11 days less because it's 354 in that 0.367 number, right? So, so the Islamic calendar is going to be uh, short of a year. So it takes 32 years and seven months for the calendars to align again, right? Right? Not, not to the beginning of the year, but just to, to the months. That is, in 32 years and seven months, which is 11,900 days, the Islamic calendar counts 33 years and seven months. One year extra, right? That makes sense to people. It's the same number of days, but they have a shorter year. And so that 11 days adds up over a period of three and a half years, uh, to be one, one year difference. Okay. Now, what I did this morning is I, I was looking at this idea of 777 months to figure how long it would be. So 777 months, I looked at prophetic months times 30. And I'm going to get this number, 23,310 days. Now, this period of time is, um, it's, a, it's, 62 years and 299 days, right? So it's it's a long period of time. Um, 
but I just wanted to see how many months this was. And then I said, well, I'm going to look at prophetic months. So I'm just going to clear this. And prophetic months are going to be um, 29.530587 times 777, right? And I'm going to get this number. And it's 22,945 plus uh, a bit of a decimal there, right? So almost one third or just a bit more than one quarter of, of a day, right? Now, if I have these two numbers and um, now um, the difference between them, so if I subtract this 23310, right? So that's, that's the number of 777 prophetic months. I subtract the two, I get 300 and, well, I should do it the other way around, do it this way, 23310 minus um, 22945, 22945. And the difference is 365 days. Does that make sense? So yeah. it's exactly one year difference. Now, this is unrelated to the Islamic calendar. This is not based on using the Islamic calendar and the solar calendar. This is just taking sim simply uh, 777 months. Now, and, and it's going to be less than, um, so if, if I take this period of time, so let's look at it this way. So two, three, um, Three one zero. So that's the that's the prophetic period of time. Um, and if I divided this by two, so I'm going to divide it by two, and I'm going to get this number. So I'm going to just put this into. I'm going to clear the memory here, and then put this into the memory. So that's now that is eleven thousand six hundred and fifty five days right so i cut it in half okay see that um but you can see it's it's not you know, 11900 so you can see that it's by cutting it in half i'm just showing you that 777 months is not um it's not related but but it is a similar amount so i cut it in half i get this um, I'm going to clear that. I'm going to do the same thing with uh, uh, 22, what's the number? 22945. And I'm going to cut that in half, divide it by two. And I'm going to get this number, which is less, right? So it's 11,472. Okay. I can add them together. Now to get this number, 23127.5. Now this period of time um, is obviously it's in between the, the numbers that we had, the 20, 22,945 and the 23,310, right? So it's, it's a number in between. And, you know, so if I divided it by two, I'm going to get a number that's, um, you know, again, it's going to be less, but it's a different less uh, than if I just use the single numbers. And if I subtracted 11900, I end up with this number, 336.25. So whatever that means. But all I'm showing here is that we have this year difference with the 777 months. And that's not double of 391 or 403, right? So another way to look at it is 391, that's months on our calendar, plus 403, that's months on the, you get this number 794, whatever that means. It is 17 days, years, or whatever it is we're symbolizing, 17 different than 777. 
Okay. But the fact that we have this number that has this difference of one year, it is if we take, and, and, and I'm not sure where to put it, except that I think it relates to what we're talking about here. Um, so let's go back on to this. So what we had here was one year difference plus 18 days, right? Now, that was the difference between 777 days, right? And which is 111 weeks. And then we have this other period, which is 1160 days. And we get this difference of 365 plus 18, so 383. Now, I'm not sure what to do with this yet other than to say that 777 weeks lunar and 707, or not weeks, months, lunar months, so 777 lunar months and 777 prophetic months is one year difference. And that's what we have here is this one year, right? Does that make sense to people why I'm bringing that up? It may, it may seem rather convoluted. <sighs> Well, not, yes, it does in a sense, but when you start taking in the cycles of the moon, it doesn't. I mean, um, I'm getting what you're saying because of the, what was that uh, word you used for the embolitic? Um, embolism. Well, you got, uh, this is a deficient embolism. Right. Right. Because it's uh, a regular would be 384 and a complete would be 385. Right. So this right. is a deficient year. Now we see 365 plus 18. Right, which is the one year and the 18 days that you had mentioned earlier with the other calculation. Yeah. Yeah. So so we have this. All of these things are tying together. Symbols that come from the Islamic calendar, Revelation 19, relationship to the Mayan calendar. All of the things that I presented on November 9th, that is, there is a message that arrived of November 9th, 2019, that has been testing this movement. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And it's going to have this third angel arriving January 11th, 2023. And and we we marked that, right? So we it's the end of Colin's prediction. In our studies, we, we came to understand a bunch of things on that date. And and that's in a sense a close of probation. That is, if you don't, if you don't understand the first message, you can't accept the second. And if and if you don't accept the second, you can't be benefited by the third angel, right? So there's something that has arrived on January 11th, 2023. In a sense, it's a close of probation. Now, it doesn't mean that somebody's probation closed on that day because people still have to understand this message, right? They have this Yeah, and people can't just get it all at one time and all at one sudden. It had, you know, this is a progressive thing. I mean, it's right. taken years to get to this point. Right. So, so we don't know when people's probations are going to close. I don't believe that we can predict any kind of close of probation for an individual. We can say in a movement that a line shows a symbol of a close of probation. But people need to actually be exposed to these messages um, and actually reject them. I mean, if they're never exposed to the message, unless it's by, you know, surely by their choice of choice, uh, you know, they choose to be blind and not exposed. Um, but but they can't they can't have rejected something they haven't seen. And so we know that that there's still people are going to have to take the time to study. If they don't, they will close their probation. But when that happens, that's in the future. The close of probation is still future. People can close their probations by rejecting light, but we're not suggesting in any way that, you know, January 11th, 2023 was a close of probation. People closed their probation because they didn't accept this message, right? And we know that this second angel of power being December 25th, 2021, we already understand some of the symbols there. 
we already understand this January 11th date. Um, but this November 9th date, uh, 2019, I mean, simply, um, and we haven't addressed everything in this song of Deborah and Barack yet, right? But, you know, we're saying that this is going to be January 11, 2020, right? That's going to be the formalization of that message. At least that's what I was saying before. But maybe it's something else, you know, uh, because maybe it's, it's because if we look at the message that arrived there, and I haven't looked at all this history to look at all the dates that we could use, um, but I see, I would just say that Jeff in, because what I, I'll also I'm presenting there is the Levite message and Jeff on, is going to recognize that on January 11th, we have a certain understanding that is going to mark this Levitical chiasm that's going to point to March 21st, 2021, 63 uh, weeks later, right? So, so we, you know, we have to try to figure out what, what that particularly means. Um, does that make sense to people? Now, so there's still a lot of work that we have to do here with these symbols, with these numbers. <clears throat> but I do want to get back to the text. So we're going to come to this tomorrow because I'm going to spend more time on it. And so are other people looking at these spans of time and what they would mean and how it's going to help us with, with our dates. Um, but when we go back to the scriptures here, um, we at least have the beginning and, and we should see some of the things at the end that this, that this structure relates to. <clears throat> and this all comes from understanding, you know, January 11th as a symbol, what it means. Um, so they chose new gods, right? That was verse eight. Then the war was in the gates and there was, a, there was, was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? Now we have this 977 and we know that the 977, did Jeff relate the 977 to September 7th, 2019? Did he do that in any of his studies? We know that he did, right? Um, okay. So there's some other things just going through my mind that we're going to look at tomorrow. We won't have time to look at today. Um, but he did. So he related that symbol of what happened with uh, Jeroboam offering on the altar in Bethel on November 22nd, 977 BC, on the 15th day of the eighth month, right? So we're all familiar with that. So, and Jeff had, had done that. He, he, he connected that September 7th to that. Okay, so we can see this is still all of part of the period of darkness with symbols that we already attach to what Parminder was doing um, in, in that history. My heart is toward governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak ye that ride on white asses and that sit in judgment and walk by the way. So, so here we have a um, number of symbols. Now, uh, speak here, this is that Hebrew word uh, that you don't usually see. It actually means more to ponder, because speak is usually like the bar or something like a word. But this is means to ponder. It is by implication to converse with oneself. Hence, so allowed transitively to other, utter, commune, complain, declare, mediate, muse, pray, speak, talk. Okay? Siach is the word. So... Now we have this symbol, 78, 78. What's 78? And it's doubled.
What about 7780? I'm sorry. Again, please, I, I didn't get that last bit. Okay. Okay, well, let's look at it this way. 78. If you multiply 78 by 24, what do you get? <laughs> we should know this from Adelio's study. 1872. On... Yes, you get 1872. If you one multiply seven... seven... That's if right. you multiply... Because he had 780 days dealing with the mandates, right? And 780 was 18,720 uh, 18, hours, right? So he just turned it into hours. So we, we can see that 78, and it's doubled, right? So that's a symbol of the midnight cry or of a mirror. And um, so that's the speak. So those that speak, you you r ride on white asses. So um, so you can see how this is all applying to the prediction of July 18th, right? So we have this Yes, word. yes. <laughs> yeah, so we have this word, uh, sakor, which means to dazzle, sheen, that is whiteness. And of course, we have asses here, athon, um, so that's a female ass from its docility. So it's a she ass. Um, but we can see the symbols here of uh, Ellen White's prediction regarding Nashville and that we attached it to Islam. Right? Makes sense. Ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. Right? So this would refer to this movement in uh, the message that it's giving regarding July 18th. Okay. And you know, we're almost out of time, but we can look at a bit more here so we, we got to remember these because we're going to come back to these symbols uh, they that are delivered from the noise of archers so were we delivered from the noise of archers on july 18 2020 um yes it, it, archers it, it, represent it, it, islam right islam that's right and the noise of archers would not that have been in a nuclear attack on nashville wouldn't you think okay now it says, yes, in, you would. yeah. Now in the places of drawing water. So that's one one Hebrew word. It just means a trough. So what 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 would this symbol be in relationship to our prediction? Mashab is the Hebrew word to bail up water to draw. Well, uh, water, we um, talk about doctrine, right? Yep. Or God's word. Yep. And, and, and this, yep. Okay, go on. We're bailing it up. You know, we're gathering it together in one spot or however you want to put it, in one mind. Yeah, so, one so we're studying. Right? Yes. Okay. And there shall they rehearse. The righteous acts of the Lord. Has this movement been doing this? We know exactly yes. These are the lines. Okay. So, so we can see, and of course, that righteous acts, that six foot six. And this relates to uh, some of our birthdays. So, <laughs> is it just me, or is anybody else experiencing theater fading in and out? Are you experiencing me fading in and out? I don't. I, anybody? Yes. You are. Okay. So I don't know why. Okay. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk clear. Um, could be the filter if I'm too quiet or something. 
Um, yeah, your voice activation on your mic, maybe. I don't know. Okay, how's that? Is that better? Much. Okay. Continue to talk. I mean, I'll tell okay, you. Yeah. Okay, so um, so we have here this 6666. Now, of course, we can see it's a symbol of the Sunday law. But from Dwight's birthday to mine is six times six times six times six days, or 36 times 36 days. And from Dwight to Iran's birthday is 6,666 days. So, so this has to do with our studies, right? The rehearsing of these righteous acts of the Lord are represented. I think that's what God pointing out to us. Yes. And even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. So the idea is that we're presenting a message uh, to this movement. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Right? So we're saying that the gates here now represents this movement. Right? That is the institutions of this movement. Now we know that the School of the Prophets was started and FFA has been disbanded. Right? But, but this is saying that there's some restoration of that. Whatever that means, I don't know. And then we have 512, uh, awake, awake, Deborah, awake, 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 utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. So here we have a doubling of awake, awake twice, um, and captivity captive, another doubling, though one is a verb, one is a noun. Um, and uh, the son of Abinoam, of course, is Barak, right? So we have Barak mentioned again. So we're going to have to come back to this tomorrow. But you can see how, how these symbols fit in exactly with what we have laid out before us. Right? Yes, that's what it's looking like. It's getting, it's, I don't want to be overconfident, but that's what it's looking like. Yeah. Well, and, and this is, you know, not very subjective. This is pretty objective what we're using here with these symbols and what we already understand. So, um, so this has to do with the July 18, 2020 prediction. And even when you look at Judges 5.10, that's the 10th day of the fifth month, right? I mean, that's the other date that we had um, for July 18th, because July 18, Julian, is the 10th day of the fifth month. Right. And um, uh, so there's some other things that we have to come back to as well. And, and yeah, just looking here. Okay, so we got the 10th day of the fifth month. And that's going to be, uh, it says, speak ye that ride on white asses, that sit in judgment and walk by the way. And this reminds us of Ezekiel, where certain elders of Israel, it's going to be the symbol on the 10th day of the fifth month, but they come and sit before him. So, so there's just tons. This is loaded with symbols that we can place on this line um, to help us to understand what this message is and where to give us light for our feet so this is this is where we're at it seems like the odds are are up in that uh you know particles in the known universe thing more than, more than all the particles yes right <laughs> yeah so we have just all of these symbols so this this study here is is pregnant with symbolism that will give birth to something right just to continue the metaphor um, and it's something that that's going to be giving us light, like that we need, because we do need light um, to understand what it is that God is asking us to do. And, and it's a dif it's difficult, right? None of this light is is something that just tickles the ear and and uh, makes us feel good about ourselves. It's to bring conviction and power to our lives, and and so that we can minister to those that will hear 
And we have to give a message whether they hear or whether they forbear, right? So, but we can see that this, this is becoming clear, hopefully. And, and this is a study that we need to go over again, um, you know, probably individually. We need to watch this study. So anyway, um, any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay. Uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today, for the things you teach us, for your wonderful blessings, um, for the health and strength that you give us in this world of sin and suffering, and even for the trials, especially for the trials that show us our need of you. Be with each person, watch over them, carry them when they need to be carried, and walk beside them and guide them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.